Hi, welcome to another video. So this might seem straightforward to some of you, but I was asked a couple of months ago the difference between various packages, so I'm going to spell it out. But also, even for the more experienced members who are watching, as the as microcontrollers and semiconductors are getting smaller, it's getting increasingly difficult to, to use them and fit them to board, so hopefully this guide will help. Right, so we've got an integrated circuit, and this one's got two rows, hence the dual. Two rows of pins, and it's a dual row, and they're in line with each other. Uh, there are obviously many other packages, but I'm just doing the basics. So that's a 40 pin, and this is an 8 pin dual in line package. And while we're at the early stage, I guess I'll show you the TO92 package transistor. So it's a simple three leg transistor TO92 package. Right, so then we progress to the quad flat pack. Uh, and this particular chip is, this is actually a PIC microcontroller. This is actually a thin quad flat pack. So the thin refers to the height. This is actually more shallow than the conventional package. And this is a quad flat pack, 44 pin. So we've got 11 pins on each side, so quad flat pack. It seems to make sense, I hope. This magnifying glass with a light, it says four octaves or something. Magnifies what you're looking at by four times. So if you're using one of these magnifying glasses, you can just about solder all these components I'm going to show you. Right, so next we've got the small outline package, SO8. So obviously the eight, referring to the eight pins. So I haven't got a spare SO8 chip to hand, but I've got one already on the board. There's a small inverter board. So that's an SO8. Um, so what you can do, you buy these adapter boards from Farnell, RS Components, or whoever you like. They come in this sort of style. And you solder the chip to those boards and then put some pins or wires on it and use it like that. What I found, Farnell sell a board made by Texas Instruments. Let's see if I can get this in. That's the brochure. And it's all these little boards and you just snap whichever one off, snap them off and solder the chip to it. Uh, and this whole set was about seven or eight pound about 20 odd boards, yet individually these boards are three or four pound each. Uh, what I'll do, I'll put up the part number later for that set. So there's the set and it caters for all these smaller chips I'm going to show you. Pretty cool, made by Texas Instruments. Right, so that's the small outline package. Right, so then we go on to the thin shrink outline package. And if I bring down this other one, you'll see how much smaller the package is compared to this one. Now with this small outline package you can solder these fairly easy with a, you know, most standard soldering irons. Uh, I still solder these by hand. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you, I've got a mapping soldering iron, I believe it's made by Tenmar because I've been at Farnell and they've got a Tenmar soldering iron identical to my mapping soldering iron. So they become more difficult to solder, but with a magnifying glass makes it a bit easier. And for this chip, there's a board. Solder that to that, and you're done. What there also is, which I haven't got here, is actually a small, uh, as a micro, small outline packet. So instead of thin shrink outline, it's micro small. I'll just show you over here. And if I pick this thin shrink chip up, I've actually used a small, uh, a micro small outline, MSOP. I'll show you on there. You can see the chips are a tiny bit too wide for the pins, but if you pushed, you can actually get it to solder on there, but you can obviously get the right board. So. My current sense amplifier uh, video was a micro small outline package, MSOP. So, and again, I used uh, I soldered that chip on using my map pin solder and I, just individual pins, magnifying glass, and 
job was done. So that's the T-SOP or T-S-S-O-P-8 T-SOP and M-SOP. Right and then we've got this small outline transistor package uh, some of you be familiar with it uh, SOT23 package so just the regular surface mount transistor three leg device so again you can buy adapter boards from eBay or use the adapter board that I showed you earlier from Texas Instruments one of the adapters caters for the SOT23 right so then we've got the small outline transistor 6 lead SOT 563 which again comes on a Texas Instruments development board one of the examples is shown here just snapped off that other lot and you can see it's a six lead transistor maybe there's some single chips in that package but I'll just slide it in there and these are difficult to solder but depending on your patience and the tip of your soldering iron if you persist you can still do it but I'll give you some more tips later on that right and then finally we've got this quad flat no lead QFN so what's going to be interesting about this video, you might remember from my other videos, I purchased this integrated circuit from Farnell. It's a microchip lithium iron battery charger or controller IC. And I said in a video many months ago, I thought there's no chance I can solder that. And what I've done, purchased some boards again from eBay. Let me just find one. That's a 20 QFN, so 20 quad flat no lead board, but this actually takes the 20 QFP as well, the 20 lead pack with legs, so, so that you can see the soldering area is larger. Purchased that board from eBay, I thought oh, I'll give this chip a go. So it's 20 pins, no legs, and what I did, put some solder paste on the board, but it shorted them all out. So I've got my regular soldering iron, went down the outside, thought I might as well give it, give it a go, and it all worked out okay. So I'll just put this LED on. So you can see there, there's 5mm LEDs in the background, uh, and that chip I believe is 4mm square with 20 pins, 20 connectors on it, but no legs. But I'll give you some tips again. Right, so there's a closer look at the regular square 20 QFN IC. Uh, and as I say, I struggled but managed to solder it and it all worked. It, the, the circuit behaved unexpectedly for a while, so I took the chip off, resoldered it, and it works fine. So it does become increasingly more difficult. But I found uh, a company in Canada that supplies circuit boards and these little prototyping boards, and they will acquire the chip and put the chip on the board for you. I mean you obviously have to pay an additional cost. So that's what I've done with this next chip which I'm about to show you. So that's a 20 QFN so I thought well if all chips say 20 QFN they're all going to be square you know quad flat pack no lead shouldn't have any trouble. If I can do this simple cheap chip I should be able to do a more advanced one. And the project I'm working on at the moment needs this chip. This is the controller IC made by Texas Instruments and it controls the receiving coil on a wireless charger. You might see I've been messing about with some of the circuits. So if I turn this over, so this is, you might see it's rectangular, but it says 20 QFN. So I thought order a couple of these 20 QFN boards from eBay and this didn't fit. You can see it's totally the wrong size. So if I turn this over, and there we go, so 20 QFN, but the orientation, totally wrong. I think we've got, is it eight, eight legs on each side and then two on the ends, uh, with the, just a pad in the middle that doesn't do anything. So that is still a 20. QFN, no lead, but totally different package. 
So as I say, I found this company in Canada, I'll put the link up later, uh, and I ordered a prototyping board, and the board came today. So let me just slide this into view. In fact, I'll put the chip on top of it. So from this, from their pictures on their internet page, I thought, right, that's a 20 QFN rectangular, two legs on each side. I thought that's the one I want. Went to solder it today, offered the chip up to the board, and you can see it's totally wrong. This is this board is even a, a smaller adapter than the one I need. I'll turn it up the other way. So if I put this over the top. Right, you should be able to see there, I'll put the chip on top of the board. I thought I'll just happily solder this chip to the board today. Maybe use some solder paste, something like that, and go from there. But no, the chip is too wide, or the board is too small. So not only are they making chips with no leads, you're getting chips called QFNs. They're calling them 20 QFNs. That's a 20 QFN. That chip in front of you is a 20 QFN. This board is a 20 QFN, but totally different again. So they're bringing out these, all these quad flat no lead packages, but in many different styles, different sizes again. So I've gone back to the company, which is at the top of the board actually. Uh, in fact, their web address is there. So what I've done, gone to this address here, ordered the correct board, just look for one that's slightly bigger, ordered this IC through them as well, they use DigiKey and you put in the DigiKey part number for the relevant chip, they'll order the chip for you, they'll solder it to the board and then ship it. I think I'm paying six or seven dollars for the privilege but uh, yeah that's that's pretty cheap so I've wasted my money with this board but it was only a few few euros and they charge you in euros so certainly give this company uh, a look if you're struggling with boards struggling with solder, soldering some of these small packages no need to put their web address up because it's there uh, and they do all these different adapter boards uh, and various other SMD and SMT equipment uh, give them a look so obviously for the hobbyist, if I mean I want I need this particular IC, it's only made in the QFN package, you know, no leads. Uh, so to this it's becoming, as I say, increasingly difficult to to source the chips or source a board to accommodate these, you know, odd packages. So you might be wondering what I want a tiny QFN package for. This one I showed you a minute ago. So in a previous video I did a wireless charging demonstration, just a simple circuit for contactless power. Well this is it here. This was the high side FET driver I started off with, just a small outline package. Then the power management package was a 48 QFN, so 48 connectors, no leads. Let's see if I can zoom you in a bit. And that's it just there in the middle of the board. So what I did, I purchased some of these adapters that take the quad flat pack and the QFN. And I struggled for a while but managed to solder that with my soldering iron. So that's a 48 QFN. So down in this corner, this part modulates the coil voltage. This little SOT 23 is fitted to a board and I've just added some additional components. So around the other side of the board here we've got uh, SC70, so SC70 single chip 70 package. That's uh, an operational amplifier, six lead. Uh, and I couldn't get that amplifier in any other package. But fortunately with the Texas Instruments development boards, these had one of the 
types to use down there. Right, this is what I use for removing surface mount components. To bolt a sole, like Super Pro gas soldering iron, just fill it in the back with regular lighter fluid, uh, lighter gas, uh, and you're away. This has got a hot air attachment, about six pound each. The whole soldering iron new, about 38, 40 pound. Snap-on tools sell these for double the money, about 80 pound, which is where I got the this one many years ago. So what I'll do, fire it up. Might be able to hear the hot air coming out of it. And see the red glow maybe. So I'll unsolder this 44 quad flat pack. And trust me, so unsoldering this won't actually damage it. I can unsolder it, stick it on another board or put it back and it will still work. Providing you, know, you don't go silly with it. So while I'm waiting for this to heat up, it's got a heat, uh, it's got an adjuster on the back to turn the temperature up and down. So you want the things fairly hot. You can obviously get the electric ones. I've got an electric one as well, but they're big, clumsy, noisy. And for this smaller work, this is all you need. It's got a nice size tip. So let's undo this chip. So just move the soldering iron around, don't keep one spot up, keep on moving it around. Hopefully you'll see the solder melt. There we go. So that's off. So you clean this board up with her solder wick, get rid of all the solder. So I've got my regular soldering iron. There's uh, an Antex 50 watt, 24 volt. This actually came part of a kit over 20 years ago. This is what I use for most of the work and I'll use for soldering this chip back on. So let me just get rid of this flux. Sorry, let me just get rid of this solder. So get some desolder wick from obvious places. So if I just, you've got to be careful on these pads that you don't pull the pads off. Right, line the chip back up. What I normally do is put it under the magnifying glass make sure the corners are lined up. So what I'm going to do is try and tack one pin, maybe two pins, maybe one in each corner. As you know, I think that'll do. That looks good to me. Maybe I'll just tack this one. Right, that chip's fairly solid. So don't be afraid of these, they're fairly robust. So what I'll do, I'll get the flux. Right, this is the flux I'm using at the moment. I've got two shorts. Uh, one comes with a dispenser, and well, this does, and the other one doesn't, so I've got to use this for ease. But So I'll prop the board up so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to squirt, I can't get in there because of the camera. I'm going to squirt some liquid flux on there, and using my 50 watt soldering iron, clean the tip. Let me just get some solder. So before so before the flux dries right so this is difficult it's just the lens is about two two or three inches away from the board I'm trying to solder so right so put a, a drop of solder on here and literally I can't see what I'm doing I think that's it, it's got it. Literally run the soldering iron up and down the legs, but I can see a short circuit there. 
just scrape that off. So let me show you on another side. Regular solder I'm using 0.7 millimeters. So let me turn this around. Obviously if I didn't have any wires in there it'd be easier. Might put some more flux on. I'd normally just put a drop on there but the camera's in the way. So do this second side. So clean my Clean the soldering iron tip, a splash on there, I think that's got it, no, it, was, it looks a bit dry in this corner so put some more flux on. The important thing is the flux, if you keep plenty of flux on there the solder is just going to stick to the tinned legs and board and Nowhere else. If you see any shorts, you can either use solder braid or just wipe it off. So that's the second side. Now the third side. To reiterate, the camera's in the way, so this would normally be a lot tidier and neater and I'm propping it up so that you can see it. Do have a solder on there. Now I don't want to melt my wires. You can see a blob of solder on there. You can hear the flux popping, so it's, this flux still there. And last side. Clean the tip. Get this crystal out of the way. Probably put too much on this one, which is a good demonstration. So there's too much solder there. So I've got my solder wick. You can take some off, taking it off is not a problem. Put too much on there because I can't see what I'm doing because the camera's in the way. Looks a bit messy from where I'm looking. Well, what I'll do, I'll clean this up with some flux remover and give you a closer look. Right, I've cleaned that with flux remover and the soldering looks okay but the chip was offline so I think two of the corners the, the legs are way off but so let me just give you a quick demo. Hopefully you can see it. Not sure if you can see the alignment but so that method is a fairly simple one. You can obviously experiment, practice. I think you can see the chip is skew with there. It's not lined up properly, but I've looked at it under a magnifying glass and nothing shorting, so that would actually work and you can see it's way off there. That's because I wasn't, didn't have it under the glass, magnifying glass, so I couldn't see what I was doing. But, but the general principle for the soldering is the same whether it's this 44 quad flat pack or these tiny chips you can use the same method or using a smaller soldering iron and a magnifying glass just solder these pins individually so this is the tip for my maplin soldering iron well, it's got a load of crud it needs cleaning but just got it out of the cupboard but this point is small enough under the magnifying glass to solder the pad on the track. So if you can appreciate you've got the pad with plenty of flux you just bring the solder in to the soldering iron. I can't hold this board steady because the camera's in the way. But you just heat the pad and then add the smallest amount of solder and keep on doing it till there's enough on the pad and the leg. Do that eight times. So you can do these 
small, uh, this is the thin shrink, so T-SOP 8. You can do that with uh, individual leads uh, and also the SOP 23 transistors. Um, give it a go, see, see how it goes. Yeah, experiment and you'll become familiar and happy doing small components. Alright, so that's the solder you just saw me using and this is the soldering iron from Maplin. Uh, well, let's see, a precision gold, gold which is, um, yeah, I believe, all sold by Maplin, but I saw this exact iron in Farnell with 10 mile where a similar sort of money. This is 450 degrees, about 60, 60 to 70 pound. It's not fantastic, this plastic bit comes off. It did that on its first day. This is only a few months old, but yeah, it come, comes off here. But obviously with a smaller tip, it's going to take anything you touch with this tip. The, the heat is going to be dissipated quickly. So you, you've got to experiment with this small tip here when doing the small work. Something else I've been messing about with last few weeks is this easy print. I believe it contains silver and various other compounds. This is the solder paste, uh, although this is, I think, I believe they're in Romania, Romania or Poland, something like that, uh, thermo pasty. I'm not over impressed with this one, it seems to just stay in lumps on the board, whether you degrease the board or not, and it comes with a massive outlet which is too big for this surface mount stuff. I had this needle from some acrylic glue, so I put that on there. We do squirt a small amount on the board. I can squeeze this out. You store it in the fridge, and when you're ready to use it, take it out two hours before you want to use it. So you literally just squirt it on the board, put some on the board, but you can see it sticks in lumps. And so if I give you a quick demonstration, I've put two tiny lines on this. So this is an M SOP. So micro small outline and I'm going to solder that chip which isn't a micro small outline that's just uh, a thin shrink small outline so I'm going to solder that to that and I'll give you a quick demo. So what you do is two thin lines I've had this under the magnifying glass just to tidy it up just to make two thin lines ideally you're meant to buy a, a, a mask and lay the mask over the top and then spread the solder paste on top. Uh, so I'm going to put that on there. Well, I've got you closer in the view. So I've started up this gas solder on again. The solder paste is on the board. So really this chip's a bit too big for this board. But I wanted to sort of demonstrate this solder paste. The only thing is I can't get in close enough with the camera now to see when the paste is melting. So you heat the whole lot up as you might yeah it's just I think it's just melted just now. So that's it's such a small package it's, it's gone quickly. Don't know if you're able to see the solder flow. So I'll pick it up with the tweezers because it's going to be hot. So it might not be perfect, but you can either then go along with your tiny thin tip and touch each one up, or using the older fashioned method with a bigger tip and just run down a lot, or just take it off again and put more paste on. Uh, but this chip is a little audio amplifier, 2 watt audio amplifier, which I'm going to wire up, see what it's like. <laughs> um, so yeah. Hopefully this has given you some ideas how to work with this ever increasingly small surface mount technology.